All right, I'm very privileged to have you here, Bailey. Thank you so much for coming on my potty, brother. Nah, bro, thanks for having me. It's my honor to be here. Dude, you came across my radar, okay, and uh, I, I'm I'm gonna pre I'm gonna preach my preach, okay. <laughs> I was at the I was at the Royal Comedy Night, then like so I was like trying to get the balls up to do it, right? And bro, you scared the shit out of me, bro, because and because I, I thought that those Saturday nights were just um were just for like new people that just got up. Oh and yeah, then you got up and you fucking killed it, Jay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I lost all hope for myself. I was like, if he's just starting, then I, I'm shit. I'm I'm gonna I'm not gonna do well. No, nah, it's, it's it's something you got to be cautious of because I mean, by that point, I've been yeah yeah I've been doing it for on and off for a few years now. But yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. There's there's people that do it like it's like the phone's going off. Oh, it's all good. Don't worry. Now we're all good. We're all good. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's just um something that i really love doing and yeah. i think i'm at a point now uh where i'm slowly doing less of those kinds of nights um like the first time of nights so for those people that don't know who you are bro, and we got to do this every time yeah, man. okay who are you brother i ask myself that question every day tim yeah. uh, every day uh nah um so my name is, is billy poaching uh i'm a comedian i'm an actor and i'm a filmmaker as well um and yeah uh uh um, I'm Samoan and Māori, uh, but I grew up in England and I moved to New Zealand three years ago to pursue filmmaking and I've kind of been doing a bit of all of that since, I guess. Bro, yeah, that was probably the one thing that got me, G, was that yeah. you look like the bro, you yeah. know, like, <laughs> yeah, like I was like, oh, yo, like, because I was hyped. I was like, yeah, another brown face up there getting there. And then you got on the mic and it was straight British accent. I was like, what? <laughs> this kind of surprise <laughs> he's like brown on the outside he's waiting there so toys i was like this kind of surprise motherfucker got me right here <laughs> the bro looks like maui but he talks like bloody cinderella like what's going on here oh shit yeah man it's a it's a weird it's a weird um situation because obviously in england being a polynesian like it's st that stands out you know like being a brown like there's plenty of brown kids at the school that i went to and, and where we grew up but in terms of the islanders and the <laughs> and the Tonga Tafunua, you know, we're pretty low on numbers uh, where I grew up. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then I came over here and I was like, oh, I guess I'm I stand out a bit here too. <laughs> it's yeah, it's it's it was no, it wasn't weird. It was it was refreshing. I was like, oh, mean, like okay. And then that got me hooked. in. I was like, okay, I want to know this dude's story. And yeah. and then like the more that I and then I was like, man, and you were fucking, you were so entertaining, bro. And uh -huh. I could, I could feel that, and I mean, I'm not just saying this because you're here, bro. Like, I'll, I'll say it to whoever, but I could feel that, like, you just really didn't give a fuck what, <laughs> like, you just were yourself, and you didn't care what anybody else thought about it. Yeah, I mean, that's something that, it, like, ever since I tried stand up, it was just sort of like, right, I gotta, I gotta try and uh, communicate how I feel about the world, and 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 then that kind of takes a moment of like, right, well, how do I feel about the world? And I guess my point of difference is that I'm so unique, you know, like I'm part of such a small, small minority of like Islanders that were raised, you know, in the land of the colonizer. <laughs> like, yeah. like um, so you really got to focus on your point of difference and what it is that you bring to the table. And I think that's something that I've really worked hard on examining in myself and sort of learning to, but then communicating it in a way that's relatable. Like, 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 yeah like i'm different but everyone else is different in their own way so what does it mean to be different and to be okay with that yeah and you, you you've hit it i mean bro you've had uh your whole life to kind of dissect it and understand what the fuck it is but you know what i mean like um like that's what makes you special and that's what makes you different and i think yeah a lot of the times people struggle with it they don't know if it's cool to be different you know yeah yeah for sure i definitely find there's a lot of pressure um for us to be a certain way and that's another thing that i found like since moving here is that like i mean we talk about it all the time in these platforms of like pacific men and maori men being raised with a certain image and being told to behave and think a certain way i think one of the things of my upbringing is that i never had that growing up where i grew up i didn't have a, a preconceived idea of like oh you're pacific island male you're gonna have to grow up tough and and uh you know all these things i didn't have that image to look to yeah um 
and so I come back and it's a, it's an interesting kind of thing of being like, oh, right, I guess it's kind of a blessing and it's a, a, a privilege, you know, to, to have kind of evaded that weird thing. Yeah. yeah. So like, um, let's like rewind it back, bro. So yeah. you were born in New Zealand or you were born in? This is where I, it's one of those things. My, my like history is one of those, every single question gets like a weirder answer. So um, <laughs> uh, I was born in Australia, actually okay <laughs> yeah 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 Shit, here we go yeah my my dad is new zealand born someone raised here in the 70s like ponsonby like in the heart of it you know like and then he became a league player and then he met my mum in aussie in the 90s but she her mom's maori <laughs> and her mom moved over to aussie like when yeah before she was born so my maori mom was born and raised in aussie and my Samoan dad was born and raised in New Zealand and they met in Aussie and then they had me and my older brother and moved to England in the nineties. Yeah. Wow. And man, like that's crazy, bro. Like, so that's, that's yeah. a, that's like a, I mean, that in itself was unique. It's know? strange. Like, um, I don't know. You, you sort of, you spend your whole life thinking you're normal and then, <laughs> and then you just sort of approach someone and then they explain who you are. And it's like, Oh wait, no, actually it's pretty, it's pretty unique. It's pretty, it's quite a rare, thing yeah and yeah because that was the like that was the first when i was watching you i was just like i want to know this dude's story like uh, i've never seen and i think like i've i'm i get that the same like not to that extent but people people see me and they look like and he's like man he's white and then i start talking and they're like wait a minute i don't yeah, know yeah. like you know and then they get to know me and they're like oh okay yeah now nah, maybe and and like it's the same thing bro like but flipped it's crazy People are, uh, people are so quick to, like, uh, I found that more so in New Zealand than England. As soon as they see you, they identify you, and then they kind of know how to communicate with you. Like, I found that, like, I'll be at a party, and then, like, like I'll be kind of quiet, and then a white guy will come up to me like, yo, G, what do you think of the new Kanye album or something like, you know, or something like that? And then I come out with my, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch voice, like, oh, yeah, it's actually pretty good, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh. Where are you from? <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, man, it's a it's a weird it's a weird thing that people kind of do in terms of just like right brown guy, long hair, islander. Right, this is how I'm going to communicate with them or whatever. And did you get any? Was that a thing in England or not? Nah. So where I grew up in England was a pretty working class, like majority white, like small town kind of thing. Um, there were brown kids around, but yeah, it's still quite a minority. And there was no, I suppose the biggest brown community there was like the Pakistani and Indian kind of um, yeah. community. So there was no real, I don't know. Yeah, New Zealand is, is real like big on the categorization of communities. Like this is the Islander, this is the Indian, this is the, you know, whatever. In England, it was just like, oh, you're brown. And it got like real generic racism. <laughs> um at school and stuff so yeah i don't know it's um yeah it is i mean bro, that's all i've known like you know like that's all i've known yeah yeah because sure. so. you're maori eh? yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, i'm, I'm, I'm more explain. yeah i'm more maori than i am european yeah but just the genes that were european just were a little bit stronger in the skin <laughs> like yeah, like, yeah 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 bro, i've got cousins hey. that are like bro like way more like have got like way more european kind of genes in them but look like the hearty brownies like you're like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but i've been in places bro where like people have started like like especially european people like white people will be like saying shit to me like i'm like oh man you know those bloody moldies like yeah, you know yeah, and i'm just standing yeah. there like oh do i say it <laughs> this is when i was younger i was like Fuck, do i say anything like no, like, you know, it is weird, man. I find myself more on edge with that kind of, kind of stuff since moving here in terms of just like, right, what is someone's assessment of me? Like, especially when, in, like in comedy, when I walk on stage, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know what, I have no idea what people think of me, but I am kind of like thinking and kind of assessing like, right, are they expecting hard out like island humor? Are they expecting like, like what, like what? I have no idea what kind of um, expectations I bring to people. I think um for me bro it was it was an intrigue it was a I was very interested I was interested to hear what you had to say because I was like hold up 
Like, like I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. okay. <laughs> and then like the more you started speaking, the more I started like, oh, yeah. okay, because I mean your material is fucking dope too. So uh-huh. I was like, oh, okay, I get this. It's not fully like Islander, like you know, like South Auckland, and yeah. it's not fully like. The, the classic white white dude like hey man have you seen the fucking you know like what about them all blacks like like those kind of things yeah. i but think it, about i think about that a lot in terms of like when i think about what what's my material going to be like i don't have the, the islander perspective in the sense that like i didn't grow up out south i didn't grow up in the new zealand school system i don't i don't know what that experience is but i also i'm not going to go up and talk about like Bro, like, oh, you see the news the other day, John, John Camp, or whatever. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly working on it, but I'm, I'm so much quicker, like, to, I'm, I'm more easily drawn to like stuff that I get angry about, and so much of the time it's about race. So it's like, what, what, what like, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure myself out on stage. Like, I'm, I'm brown, obviously. I'm constantly reminded of the fact that I'm brown, but I, I, yeah, like I said, I talk like a bloody <laughs> pom. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's great, bro. I think it's amazing. I think it was like, that <laughs> yeah. was the first thing that drew me. I was just like, holy shit. And then that was like, bro, I got to find this dude on Instagram. I got to follow this dude wow, just like, to get like more, like just to get to know you more. And yeah, then, man. um, and then, yeah. And then, fuck, that's how we linked up. So, it was, yeah, it was for sure. Dope. And it's been cool getting to know you, bro. Like, it's so exciting. Like, I love the Auckland comedy scene. I'm definitely seeing such a rise in, um, in Maori comedians in particular, like, slowly coming onto the scene like the bro Hone or uh there's a comedian called Kura Tudu Fenua and there's just so much like I don't know I like the idea of diversifying what it means to be a Maori comedian or to be an islander comedian. What do you think um some of the some of the uh, the, the, the obstacles are for and I mean I know I don't want to just say New Zealand because you were like you know but for Maori and Pacifica to get up and give it a try. I mean, I'm sure there's a cultural thing in terms of like, so like I said, I didn't have the same experience as a lot of like Islanders in the world, but I think there's a, a common denominator of like, we're raised to be quite humble and kind of, um, what's the word? Like kind of to yourself, keep to yourself, do your work, get on with life kind of thing. Look after your family. You know what I mean? Like those kind of values of like, yeah, just, just keep going, just do what you need to do. And so I think the idea of getting onto stage is almost counter to that and kind of drawing attention to yourself and being, being an idiot. But I don't know. I don't, like I say that, then there's such massive movements for theater and performance in, in, in who we are as people as well. And I think maybe there's a bit of a reclaiming thing of people being like, you know what? No, we're loud. We're, we laugh hard and we get, we're like funny people. So we're going to showcase it to the world. I think, um, I think the rise of like social media yeah has has, has kind of enabled certain you know minority groups to be able to speak and, and to and no, i mean no disrespect to um you know like um the system i suppose but it is i mean it's pretty it's pretty like there's a lot of gatekeepers i suppose yeah man especially in i don't want to say in comedy but because and it's not a bad thing. It's like they need to be gatekeepers because they can't just let anybody get up there and and, and talk. Sh- but know. but I mean, yeah, absolutely, I agree. Like like we, there needs to be some kind of filtration system of, of quality. But I think when the system is so kind of colonial and and kind of and patriarchal as well, there's obviously like a male thing in there as well. Yeah. If if, it, if the system is so heavily geared towards the success of white men, then they're not really letting anyone in at all rather like they like <laughs> like they're just letting the same people in like rather than you know brown people brown women brown you know trans identifying people um yeah i don't know it's that that said i like <laughs> um i haven't noticed any specific barriers with with comedy regarding race i find that there's actually a, a big push at the minute I, other comedians of earlier generations might find a difference, but I, I definitely find that I'm quite supported mm. as, as a brown comedian. Yeah, and that's cool. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm glad to see that. Um, there's, there's, you know, that that's being there's been some accommodation for that because um, yeah, for years and years, bro. Like being in New Zealand, there was Billy T. James. Yeah, man. And then there was no one. Like mm. uh, there was no one for a long time, and then like you know your Mike Kings came along. Right. Um. He, 
yeah, but they didn't they didn't bring up things like Billy T. James did. Like that. He would bring up a lot of race issues and bring them funny, but I mean, yeah, yeah. So and then like after that, you know, you see the rise and the fall of, of certain comedians. And I mean, bro, I'm speaking from the outside looking at like there's no kind of like backed oh. up to my claims. But um I, I do think like I think it's it's around the time, bro. Like time right now to you know to grow the indigenous kind of comedy scene Could definitely be i mean i mean that, i say that as well man like like i feel very passionately about how i feel but whether it's valid like i'm 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 so new to the scene as well man like i i'm still kind of working you know what i mean like i'm working my way towards something um but it's really cool yeah. to see see people like yourself and kura like kura's amazing kura is gonna be like world famous one day i can oh, see it wow, i was i sat down and had a chat with her like first time i ever met her and i was just like you're amazing yeah yeah such an insane talent and she has the same kind of thing as well like um like we'll talk quite often about her jokes and stuff and she's like i just i, I just kind of trust the maori perspective i just trust the maori comedians because she oh, she does a lot of like um decolonization humor just like a lot of like uh, jokes about the maori identity and stuff um so i think it's really cool that she has a space to talk to comedians like me and you who are who are maori and kind of talk, talk or the kind of stuff she's doing in the right way yeah she's man i i i was i i did the i've only done two gigs one was at the one was at the classic and one was at the x bar and she was at the x bar one and i just mm -hmm. sat there watching because I, I I was like I saw her stuff, and then I saw that she was on at the same kind of venue as me, the same open mic. So I was like, oh man, like I get to watch, watch it. And then I was yeah, man, she's choice, man. Yeah. And she's only been going for like a year and a bit. She was saying. Yeah, yeah, for real. And she started doing musical stuff. And I, and this is probably like a bit of a cheap comparison, but I've told her she sounds like if if SZA wrote Flight of the Concord songs. Wow, that's pretty dope. Because she's got a, a like an amazing voice, a stunning voice, and writes great music. And then on top of that, it has to be like the funniest thing you've ever heard. And it's almost like, how dare you be so talented? Yeah, she's just amazing. Yeah, but yeah, bro. So like, how did you get started in like in comedy in the um in the UK? In comedy, so I um I I, I was always like a like I liked being silly at school. Like I liked making people laugh. And I wasn't necessarily the class clown, but like I was definitely like the oh yeah that guy that guy's pretty funny I think. Um, and I started making YouTube videos when I was in high school. Um, I made one making fun of my teachers, and that got around the school. And I would start to like appreciate the attention of it. And at a point, I was like, right, okay, when I go to university, I'm gonna do stand-up comedy. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it once. I'm gonna and then you know if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And I remember when I went to university. Yeah, that, I mean, that's basically the story. I wrote, uh, in England, they do four-minute sets. So I did a four-minute set, rehearsed the hell out of it, got my brush in the, in the mirror, and I was like, I was pretending I was Bernie Mac or something. I was just like, yeah, killing it, whatever. And then I got up at this little open mic, and it was that thing where, like, half the crowd was my friends because I was so nervous. But then the, the other half of the crowd was like, yeah, it, it, I, I killed the first time I did stand-up. And I remember I got off stage in the MC um this guy called paul smith he was like oh how many times have you done it i'm like that was my first time and he goes no way that's that, you're on to something and then that was yeah <laughs> yeah that's cool yeah that first that first hit bro it's addictive bro it's um <laughs> it's a, it's like the pringles like can't just can't have just one Once you um can't, can't stop right yeah yeah that's it man like i did that gig and then i started what I found is with comedy, like in both countries, it's so easy to network, especially if you're a new voice that does pretty well. People are like, yeah, okay, let's email this organizer, like, like whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, I started doing open mics and this was in Liverpool in England. <laughs> I remember the first time I bombed and it was horrible. It was like really bad. And I, like, it's one of those like tortured, like traumatizing memories. And it was in because it was in Liverpool. It was down the road from the Cavern Club where like the Beatles got their name. Oh, and it was this like little touristy bar called John uh, John Lennon's Bar. And there was like a giant picture of John Lennon's face behind me. <laughs> and there was 
maybe four comedians lingering at the back of the room waiting for their turn and one audience member this middle-aged parkia guy with like a glass of red wine just sort of swilling it and it was just four minutes of hell, bro. <laughs> like, I was just like, I was like, no, these guys have heard my material and they don't like it. This guy's not my audience. I want to walk home listening to some sad music. <laughs> Man. Uh, yeah. That, that feeling of like, I'm the man just yeah. getting crushed, bro. It's pretty much fucking. Well, I it's, had it, but like, you know, it would be the, so the bombing thing. I remember Pat and Oswald said once, like, the important thing about starting comedy is to bomb and then wake up the next day and realize you're not dead. Like realize like life still goes on. You've still got other gigs, like, and then you start doing it more regularly. And it now kind of, I mean, I, I, I care a lot when I bomb, but I definitely feel comfortable in the fact that I'm just going to, all right, okay, I'll just do another gig and I'll try and do better then. Yeah. And it's, I mean, like I haven't got to, I mean, I've only had two gigs, so right. like, but when um, I I've seen, I mean, bro, when when I was with you when, when we were yeah, in classic, like, there was a couple bombs there. There's a couple of train wrecks, and then even yeah. even the one, bro, even even the one you're on though. The first time I saw you, there was a there was a dude that came up, bro, and I just felt so bad for the dude. Damn, was, like, the ball head guy, and he wouldn't get off, and they had to play him off. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I remember him. Yeah, I was like, I, um, he's, off, like, like, I felt sorry for him. It's rough, man. It's it's tough, especially when I'd like, like, yeah, no, I've had bad gigs. It happens. It's such a, like, it's a casualty of the job. And then it's worse because obviously the more time you spend in the scene, the more you kind of get to know these people and how committed they are. And it's just like, damn, it sucks that they didn't get what they wanted. Yeah, it's, it's a weird, it's a weird thing, man. But like I said, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still very green to it all. Yeah. I, bro, yeah, no, nah, I got my first taste, bro, and I was just like, see, here's the thing, bro, is I've been telling stories online for years, bro. like, I've yeah. been, like, all these, like, yeah, the storytelling element to it, like, I've kind of had these same stories, and I've critiqued them, uh, yeah. hit these certain points, right, so I'm like, okay, so I've been doing that for a long time, so when I first got up, I was just like, okay, I'll prepare it out, I know what I'm gonna say, I'm good to go. Yeah. And then, bro, like when it's time, to, when it's go time, and you're like standing next to it, it's time to get on, bro. You just so it's scary as fuck, dude. Mm. Like, dude. I was dropping my nuts, bro. It's uh, yeah, yeah. I still get, yeah. There's some gigs where I just kind of feel like I don't know if it'll be. I'll be on the lineup with someone that I really respect or someone that I care about being the audience, and then I just sort of feel. I feel f- so fine all day. Absolutely fine. I look forward to the gigs. I'm like, you know, oh, I'm getting on stage. It's cool, whatever. And then just that second between the person before you getting off and the MC going out and saying your name, I'm just like, my heart drop- drops through my stomach. I'm just like, this is the worst. What am I doing? Why do I do this? Man, I had, um, it was, um, I was the one, I was the first one after the break. Yeah. Oh. So, you know, you're standing there and then the MC is out there like slaying that shit. Cause he's Who was your MC, right? do you remember? Uh Patch. Patch Lambert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man, yeah. he was he was on that night, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was just a cool dude, man. And um yeah, and then he he was just killing it, bro. And um, you know, the doubts are going through my mind, like, bro, I'm not I'm, bro, these people aren't gonna laugh at my shit. They're laughing at this dude's shit. He's the man. Like, I'm gonna come on, they're gonna be like, yeah. And um and then I you know then you get on and you pop your first joke out and you get a laugh and then and it's all go from there it's like autopilot yeah, yeah. like yeah. yeah especially if, like that's it like if you know your material if you believe if you believe your material and you know like you know you're not just saying something you think is funny as long as you believe what you're saying it's just like uh... yeah because that's I mean Leah there was a time bro and I was I was I was getting up there and it was almost like an out of body experience bro. like. Yeah. I, I was talking. It was on autopilot, right? So I was talking, but like in my mind, my mouth was going. Mm. You know, but in my mind, I was like admiring myself. Yeah, you <laughs> kind of step out. Hey, you kind of step out of your body and you're just like, wow, I'm doing really well right now. Like, yeah, that's I'm what, exactly it. Yeah. what happened to me. Yeah. Yeah, I was just like, bro, you're the man. Gee, fucking look at this the, shit. The strange thing of just like, whoa. Yes, that's exactly yeah. what it is. 
you're in the audience. You're enjoying the show as much yeah. as that. It was the yeah. first time oh, I've had in sport. I've had that like happen, but that's a bit different because you're like, you know, it's muscle memory. It's you. This is my first time, so bro, I love the bro. But it's just the and here's another thing I want to ask you about, bro, is the grind. Like yeah, when you finish, like when you finish a first set and you think you kill and you go off, bro. What what do you do like to kind of like critique? You know, because you could go to another one. You go to a, you could go next week and fucking get booed off the stage. But you yeah, said man. the same thing. It takes um, it takes I don't know. It took me a while to get to the point that I'm at right now, um, which is like I feel like I have a relatively tight-ish system of how I do things. Um, when I first started, it was just like right, this killed. And then you kind of realize like sometimes it's just the room you know, or whatever. Like you, you, you kind of figure out how you feel about bombing. Um, but one thing I've started doing, like I record myself every night and I listen to it when I get home and I think like, okay, this bit works, this bit works. I have bits now that I know in a decent room will do pretty well. And if I have to rely on them, that's when I know I'm do doing bad, right? Like, I, I, like I'm still trying to figure out a way to work in new stuff especially like with COVID and stuff last year, I basically just did the same material all year. Um, so I'm, now I'm in a position where I'm like trying to get rid of that material. <laughs> like oh, wow. I'm trying to write like new stuff and it's real like, that's the point at which you're like, oh, I'm terrible at this. <laughs> like you spend a year refining something. So it's so much better at the end of the year than the beginning of the year. And then suddenly you tell yourself, I can't do that. And then you just left it like, oh, empty page. I can't, I can't write jokes. What am I doing? How did I get this far? Uh -huh. Bro, when did you start, like, apart from the YouTube stuff you did with in school, like, when did you get serious about, like, filming? So uh, I, when I left high school in England, I went to university in Liverpool to study media production. I knew I wanted to make films. I knew I wanted to, I, like, I knew that was, like, a job that I wanted to do. Because, uh -huh. um, you know, no one was going to cast a Polynesian kid in their movies in England. Like, there's no rules over there. So I was like, right, okay, I'll learn how to write films. I love movies. I like watching movies. And I'll just write movies for myself or whatever. And then, yeah, studied, studied in England for a year. Didn't like it. And then halfway through that year, I came back here on a holiday um, for, like, uh, it was my grandfather's headstone revealing. And it was the first time I'd been back to New Zealand since a childhood holiday. Oh. And it was like a real, like, <laughs> like surrounded by this massive Psalm 1 family, reconnected with some mums, Fana. And it was just like, wow, such a beautiful, like, this is, this country's great. And then I also had a thing of like, all right, I'm 18. I'm going to drop out of uni. I'm going to move to New Zealand. <laughs> and it was just such a, like, if there was ever a time to do it, it would be now. Because otherwise I'm going to wake up, I'll be 45, like 50 and like, oh shit, I should have done that thing when I was 18. Um, so yeah, I dropped out of uni, worked for a year, like like flipping burgers, wiping dishes and stuff like that. And then I applied to film school in Auckland. So that's probably like when I was like, okay, no, I'm, I'm pretty serious about film now. I'm going to go study it in New Zealand. And then yeah. I went to film school in 2018. What's the, um, in terms of the community around uh, fil film and entertainment uh, compared comparison between, you know, in, in the UK and New Zealand. Have you figured out already? Because you've been, you know, like, you see much difference? Well, so, so, I mean, I studied media for a year in England and they were like, three-year degree, they were like, okay, if you work really hard on this degree, it's quite a well-respected course. It's very like, you know, we're very connected with the industry the best graduate scheme we can offer you is like making cups of tea at the BBC wow. after three years and like 9,000 pounds a year, <laughs> like plus, you know, whatever else. Um, yeah. Maybe we can get you an internship on, you know, the news or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I came to film school here and bro, like I, it was a one year film course and we had mates dropping out to go work on, TV shows and stuff like that. It's it's so much more connected here because the community is so much smaller. Yeah, and word of mouth just means so much in terms of like, yeah, I don't know. It's easy to it's easy to build a rep here for who you are. Do I you think. um? I mean, do you see much of? I mean, right now, bro, with social media blowing up, well, it's always blowed up, but like, 
I don't, the, the the production value of something going on on uh, Instagram or YouTube and things like that is so high. Do you notice that like there are a lot of people that have zero, you know, uh, film education, but are still kind of like sorting it out? I well, that, it was such a big thing for me in terms of like, did I even want to go to film school? Mm. The biggest film I went to film school was to meet people, was to network, because I think realistically, film and TV is something. You, you can kind of teach yourself or learn on the job. But the best part about film school for me was, yeah, like I got to meet some of the people that I still work with to this day. And I got to make a bunch of stuff that's managed to kind of launch a bit of a kind of pathway for myself. Yeah. Um, I don't think film school is <laughs> essential, but it, it, it definitely helps in some areas more than others. I think especially with networking. like Yeah, man. Yeah. It's such a massive part of the game is, is networking. Sorry, my bulldog's like drinking the loudest bowl of water down there. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's, and it's cool, man. Like, I think it's... <laughs> it kind of yeah. sounds, yeah, it kind of sounds like you're taking a piss, G. You're, you're pissing nah, sitting down. Dog, promise. I promise you it's the dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, this is the thirstiest dog in the world. Hang on, I'm going to move this water. I'll be right there. You're fine, mate. You're fine. Because I think, yeah, bro, I was just saying, like, um, I reckon, I reckon, yeah, there's some amazingly talented people just making shit. And it's, yeah, it's, it's such a beautiful thing as well. Like, um, I mean, giving the tools of production to the people, man, it's so powerful. And I think one of the things that I'm really excited about is, is people kind of discover more about film and the medium of, of story, like, or like visual storytelling is like, like, bro, <laughs> Um, some kid in South Auckland can make like an Oscar winning film on his phone. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, we have the, we have so much power given to us now. And I think the important thing to do now is to teach, teach people how to use the tools. And, and that's, that is honestly what it is. It's, 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 and bro, here's the thing is like, YouTube teaches everything. Yeah. Like yeah, man. Like there's nothing, there's no part of the filmmaking process that you can't find a 10 minute video on. And I think, um, and, and that's another thing. If that's not your thing, bro, you just easily kind of think, find someone that can do that for you. Yeah. And it's, and it's, and yeah, yeah. It's so easy to network and find like, oh dude, there's a, there's a kid who goes to the school nearby and he's keen to do some camera stuff. He like loves photography. He wants to shoot a movie. There's another kid who does drama. He's an actor. Like we've got, you know what I mean? Like it's, you can build a team so much easier like yeah yeah like even even it's and it's happening so quickly like when i was in high school in 20 let's say 2013 like there was maybe like two of us <laughs> that were into it and they were we were kind of like yeah we can make our own movies now with our phones and it was so much harder but i think now with you know tiktok and youtube and all this stuff people are just getting more interested in it you think um with social media the the ability to just pick up and try and do something funny even if it's not funny <laughs> like, yeah. like do you ever see some of these people and just go man if they just had some let's just have some training on how to write a joke i think there's that yeah that's probably the flip side of it is that so what what happens when you make a like a TikTok and and you upload it? You've got like a thousand views in a second. If you if you've got clout, if you if you were like popular in high school, or whatever, you've got views and people will love it because you know as soon as you've got clout, you've got respect, and it's a whole weird kind of power game. Um, um, uh, yes, and and so I don't know. Yeah, that's the one thing I I, I kind of worry about it sometimes. Like I feel like people kind of just chase the the shallow stuff sometimes. And then the shallow stuff, I don't know, man. It, I, I compare it to food. Fast food is not good for you. Mm. <laughs> Fast food is not good for you. It tastes good. Maybe it provides some kind of like instant gratification or whatever. But I would, I think, you know, I, I'll take like a slow cooked meal any time of the day over like a, you know, yeah. one dollar burger or whatever. It's really weird, man. Like I, I've seen, I've seen people come up, and I've seen them blow up, and then you know, like um. And sometimes I'm just like the watering down, watering down the quality of yeah. the jokes or the skits just to get something out. And 
like Instagram, not just Instagram, but any social media, they reward consistency. Yeah. And, and yeah, sometimes good things take time. Like you got to kind of think through things, you know? I think that's kind of vanished there as well. Like the idea of like, because everyone can see everything so like um, immediately now, we can see you can post a video every single day and have and made it that day. But I kind of like the idea of like disappearing for a bit, <laughs> like it going off the radar and then coming back. It's like, oh yeah, I've made the short film. Like it's it's crazy, it's weird, and I'm trying to like experiment with some stuff. I don't know, man. I, like I, I just don't, I just don't watch that stuff. Like the TikToks and all of that. I, I, I it's not. Maybe it's a generational thing. Like the kids, kids love it, but I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think um, I, 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 I feel you on that one. I mean being on social media and, and having to be on social media for the, you know, to promote the podcast and yeah, man. and things like that. Like, you know, you, you get into circles where you're like, Oh, okay. That's such and such. That's this person. But it really comes down to um, kind of like just being, being proud. Oh, I don't want to say being proud of the work because you could be proud of whatever you do, but kind of having some like, I don't know quality assurance with yeah man yeah 100 percent. i mean that's the thing like you because you post daily for the podcast right yeah but the podcast in terms of like even just in the technical sense of having the conversation takes time there's like history behind it we know each other we knew each other before this conversation we spend time together and now we're going to spend some time exchanging ideas right yeah, yeah that that time and effort and then plus the editing and the release of it all like that time shows and you feel it when you watch something i can all you can also tell when someone picks up their phone and they do a racist impression of some minority and then it gets two thousand views that's another that's another fucking thing i, I want to talk to you about too bro yeah i don't know if you're are you familiar with um some of those you know, i mean i mean there's been a couple of social media people that are of a different race mm. And they'll say they'll say a joke around Maori, or they'll say a joke around um, Pacific Islanders. Yeah, I see those, bro. I see those. You see what I'm saying? And then like the backlash comes. Yeah, man. And then they're like, "Hey, man, just jokes. I was only joking, man. bro. I don't think that's valid enough." Yeah, dude. I I think there needs to be more of a discourse around that, eh? like more of a conversation with with those creatives. Um, about what the impact of just a joke is when 5,000 people see it in a day. Yeah. What is it just a joke if the, if you're making thousands of kids in South Auckland believe that about Maori and Pacific Islanders, you know what I mean? Like it's not just a joke when there's a consequence. Yeah. And I think like the consequence is, you know, like, I mean, it's positive. They're getting people to, they like, people are liking it. Them, yeah, yeah, I mean, for their rep, for their clout, bro, it's it's unreal. But in terms of the conversations we're having about representation and, and uh, about how people treat and talk about our, our people, it's um, it's not it's not so positive. I don't think. Is it double standards, bro? Uh, like, think about this for a second. If listen, there's plenty of like, multi Pacific Island. Um, I don't not comedians, even comedians. But content creators, I feel content like that's, creators, that's a, anything like that, they, yeah. they joke about it. You know, it's yeah, all man. goods. But yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm just playing devil's advocate at the moment. I know that it's but, fucked up. But, but no, I mean, I like. I would never say that I support that work either. That's that's the thing. Is like these. I feel like those. I mean, we have just as much uh, responsibility and accountability to be posting things that aren't, you know, harmful or, or encouraging kind of offensive ideas, like. I mean, it, racism is such a huge issue in the country, and I, and it's and and I think Silla Alo talked about it on his podcast. Like, it's it's an issue in our community as well, and within the island and uh, the island and, and Maori communities in terms of just like, bro, we hold these beliefs just as firmly as as, as a lot of the Pakeha do. That's funny, bro. I don't know. Are you familiar with the the work of the Cougar Boys, bro? By any chance? I am, man. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, like, um, there's Shiv Neil. He's the uh, the little Indian one. He's yep. the nicest guy out. He's, he's right, just right, a cool right. guest. Right? But, like, um, he was, you know, he would do a lot of jokes around uh, Samoans mm -hmm. and, uh, and and Tongans and Maoris. But because he was in a group of, of Tongans, and, uh, he yeah. kind of, like, it was they. It was funny, you know, and and, and and there was also a thing about they they were giving it back to him in equal measure, right? Mm. 
to being to being Indian. I I mean, my whole thing is like, I I just it's not it's not for me, man. And I, I like I, I love I mean I love their content. I appreciate like it's so cool to see what they're doing and the successes. I'm like, bro, I can't even hold a candle to to what they do. But it's just in terms of that part of the discussion, in terms of like, because um I, I brought the same conversation up to Terrell when I had yeah. on one of the times I had Terrell on. And he's he said it. He said, "Bro, if you're gonna cancel that guy, you need to cancel us because we were letting it happen with Shavnil. Like you know, yeah. uh, and it's a valid point. Like you know, I, and that's the thing. Like, well, that's what I'm saying. Is like, if that's if that's, yeah, I, don't, I can't I can't really like condone that from from anyone. Mm. But I'm also yeah, I'm not the thousands of viewers that they have. Yeah, it's it's and, also, a, and I, like I just don't know. I, I don't have the power to cancel someone. I'm just. If I don't like something, I'm just not gonna. Yeah, watch but that, it. and the other thing too is it's it's kind of very similar to like um, African American people using the N word. You know right. what I mean? And right. and you're saying that you're not you're not um like you can't use that word, which is fucking what it is. That's right. how that's how it should be. And but, that's like uh yeah yeah I don't I don't use the word. Uh, I know that that's, that's a discussion as well within the Pacific Island community. I've heard some. Um, pretty strongly reasoned arguments for why we should be able to say it as Pacific Islanders. But uh, yeah, it, it's just, it doesn't sit with me. I don't think. No, but I, I, I'm just saying like, um, like, you know, it's, it's a very similar yeah. kind of construct. Yeah. And and it's, to... but it, it, I think, yeah, again, the key is just to have the conversations. Like there's so many of these, like you said, these, these content creators, and even, even like some of the up and coming ones, they start to reach for that, for the clout is in terms of just like, right, I'm just going to make an Indian joke. I'm going to make an Islander joke. And it's just going to be like, that's going to be how I make my way to the top. And it's just like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Cause, Cause I'm on stage talking about why people like, like it's nobody's business, you know, like, like that's, that's the thing as well. Like I, I, my, I come from a position of trying to always um, punch up with my humor and like, like a white person, me making a joke to a white person isn't the same as me making a joke to an Indian person because of the racial dynamics and the, the power. And I think it's the power of the oppressed, you know? Yeah, thousand percent. Yeah. Thousand percent. I like talking to you, bro. I get to use my big words. Bro, you know? hey, that's what we're here to do, bro. I, I know. <laughs> I, I get in, I get into my bag, bro. That's what we, the- and that, like that's that's truly like not to like just butter your bread, but like that's what I loved about the podcast is giving a platform for for people to have these conversations um, and to ex- kind of exchange differing opinions on on yeah this kind of stuff. And 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 I think like with that's one thing that's one thing that I've kind of figured out right is that a lot of the times people people will listen to me and they'll go. Oh, he's just a South Auckland dude, like blah blah blah. And then I'll get like John Campbell on, and we'll talk around like the Waitangi Tribunal and things like yeah. that. And even even like he was like far out, like okay, yep, let's talk about that. And you know, because yeah. and a lot of people don't know about that stuff. You know, they yeah. don't know about yeah. racial equality. They don't know about um what that actually means. I don't either, but I'm willing to ask questions. So we can all learn. That's, that's the key to every conversation is being willing to ask ask the questions. Is like, I'm so sorry, this dog's like driving me crazy. All right, uh, so. all right, <laughs> but yeah, so I think um, one of the coolest things about having that power is that I can kind of like I can shift in and out. I'm always shifting yeah. in and out of like, um, uh, yeah, and, and it's a surprising thing, and I think it's very similar to you, bro. Because people look at you and like what we talked about before, and then you come on, and then you, you know, you've got the British accent, and you, you, and it's like, holy, like, okay, and that's what's so intriguing. People, yeah. people like to get surprised. I, I definitely a big part, like a, a mission st- statement that I've had since it's like committed to making films. Like, I want my children to grow up in a world where they can see themselves on screen, whatever that means, whoever they end up being. Um, and I think part of that, I feel like in, in trying to pursue, like telling honest stories about our people, we so often reach for the, um, we tell the saddest stories and obviously that's, that's important. We need to be hearing those stories, but I I think on my journey, I I really want to start presenting stories about like, 
uh, just the, the role models, the articulate, well-spoken, passionate, emotional, um, well-adjusted classifica men and women that, that exist in our lives, you know, like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know, I ramble. No, um, but, but I yeah. mean, representation in media is yeah. something that, bro, throughout the world, like, and I'm not just talking about like, USA, UK, New Zealand, bro, like, even on in the middle of fucking Africa, bro, like, mm. you know, you, you'll find, you know, rep- there, there won't be representation because the people that hold the, hold the gates open and close, you know, it's, um, it's a, it's a rough fucking, it's a rough road to try and get representation of people's culture onto, Dude. onto TV, onto mainstream anyway. 100%. And that, yeah, that's I, not uh, corny. Sorry to interrupt, bro. That's not corny or like a cliche. Mm. You know, like there's thousands of doctors that are yeah. from uh, Pacifica, Maori. You know, there's, there's there's thousands of lawyers, and there's, there's you know, it's, it's it's out there. But we get pushed in the face that a lawyer looks like this, yeah, and a doctor looks like this, and that's how it needs to be. And then we also get pushed the image of a, like a Maori looks like this, a Maori lives like this, an islander in South Auckland lives like this. As I bro everywhere, like how are we supposed to? Like that's such a ceiling to put over us, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's uh, it's it's crazy. It's crazy to think. My take on it is like I spent my entire life growing up watching white guys and empathizing with them on screen. You know, like like that. I I always I never had any trouble emoting or crying a a movie because the lead was white. And if I could do that with a brown lead, if I can make some little white kid really truly feel how it feels Flip it. Yeah, I see. To, to be me to be a person like me who looks like me or who who grew up here with with my skin color if i can make someone feel that in a real way that's like that's the magic of what we do bro bro your journey is your journey is an amazing thing to, you know like everybody hates chris bro <laughs> you imagine if that was a polynesian kid in the middle of fucking Bristol, G. Bristol. <laughs> that shit would be fucking crazy. It would be it. It would be interesting. It's not 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 a biopic of you, but no, just no, no, that yeah. concept. You know, I mean, I've thought of, I've thought of versions of it in terms of, but I would rather focus on the returning home section of it. That would I'd, be crazy too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, that would be the sort of like. I don't know. There's ideas. I, there's stuff that I, I'm trying to write. But, but um, like, cause cause Pex is doing. He's doing a yeah, man. About yeah, I can't wait to see that. Growing up, and um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that too. Like I I've had multiple chats with his uh, his upbringing and things about that, and yeah. it's it, yeah, and he's he just you know he was like, yo, I'm just taking that, turning it up to a hundred, and just you know stuff like that is um is so. Uh, powerful everything is like point of view perspective is that fresh off the boat i imagine a, b- a big influence on this show have you ever seen that show yeah man that's so fresh good. off the boat you got atlantis such a specific like life story um these yeah i don't know just stories about like very specific groups of people in very specific places in the world i think like how often f- hold, on, hold up for a second how fucking good is atlanta bro? unreal unreal bro, surprisingly <laughs> fucking unreal like i thought oh yeah donald glover blah 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 i watched community like fucking start to finish like yeah four times. Too. um but bro you know you think oh yeah he's just coming in and you know he's a rapper's manager and you're just like oh yeah fuck this will be fun and yeah. then it's not it's just like serious shit and then you're like, weird what the- as hell. that's the that's the thing is that it's weird as hell and it's not like if you gave a white white guy uh, a script and said right we're gonna make a show about a a rapper's manager, it would be such a different show. Oh, bro. And it's just the idea of like, he's he's presenting such a weird, specific point of view in the world. And it, and and it's interesting to us. And we're like, we're maybe not <laughs> empathizing or relating to it, but it's so, it's so interesting to watch. Bro, like that Teddy Perkins fucking, that Teddy Perkins like, episode, G. Like cinematic masterpiece, <laughs> like, like unbelievable work. It's it's absolutely amazing, bro. You're just like, what the fuck? Yeah, man. Bro, there's so many good ones, bro. It's the alligator man one, bro. 
Yeah, <laughs> like Cat Williams, yeah, bro. There's the um, there's the one with the barbershop, and the dude's like, I rewatched the barbershop one the other day, and it's truly like Brian Tyree Henry, um, as Paperboy, bro. Like, and Darius, like, like Keith Stan- Stanfield is, is Darius. It's like this is career making stuff. Like, we'll be talking about these performances for the next few decades, bro. Lakeith is a fucking out the gate dude, too, bro. Yeah, dude. Fuck, have you seen? Oh man, what's that? Uh, sorry to bother you, bro. I love that film. Holy shit, the ending! Uh-huh. Like, I don't know, it's gonna spoil it for anybody, but the ending is the most out the gate fucking ending I've ever seen on a movie oh, yeah, 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 in my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. With the fucking horse stick and shit, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, like, there was there was a there's a there's a thing about like people like um, Boot Driver who did um, Sorry to Bother You, Donald Glover doing Atlanta. I think, like, I like the idea of minorities get, being given permission to be weird. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're yes. still often told, like, now you're a gangster. Now you're like this. Like, you're raised on the street. You're, like, you're impoverished. I like I like the idea of making stuff that's different, that's offbeat, that's 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 a bit stranger. And the funniest cool. thing was, is, like, um, like, Jordan Peele was, like, the first dude to try and, like, dude. when he did Get Out, they were like, oh, okay. Like, he's not just a comedy dude. Yeah. And then, you know, that kind of kept the ball rolling and then yeah. uh yeah i love sorry to bother you man i was the only one in my household like it was me my, my old girl and my and my missus they were just like what the fuck is this man and i was just like this is crazy i yeah i find that that stuff's a bit of a hard sell to kind of like more people i want to who- see that judas that judas movie bro. judas and the black messiah bro is it coming out bro uh is it already out I don't know, bro. I, I don't know if it'll just be on streaming or if they'll do special screenings or whatever. Shit. It's but, COVID. It's COVID. Yeah. Fucked everything up for us, baby. I really, I saw that and I was like, bro, we need to make a protest film about like New Zealand, bro. And it needs to be cool and it needs to be sexy and it needs to be like angry. Dude. I would, I would love to watch that, bro. Yeah. I would, yeah. And if you need me, bro, if you're on that, <laughs> holla at me. Uh, give me a few years, bro. I'm still, I'm still, uh, I'm, again, again, I'm still pretty green. I'm still working my way. Bro, so what's the end goal for you, bro? I want to be in a position where I get to constantly be making stuff. I want to, I, let me rephrase that. I want to be able to tell stories and for people to listen. I think I've always thought of it as, as being like, right, I've got to write a catch-all kind of goal of like what would truly just make me happy. If I could write, if I could just do open mics for the rest of my life, I don't think I'd be too unhappy. You know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) if I could just make little YouTube videos with my friends, I don't think I'd be too unhappy. Um, I mean, in a, in a fantasy world, I get to make movies and stuff and they they get to be on big screens. That's awesome. But I think at the base level, I kind of just, I just want to tell some stories. That's what really, uh, Keeps me ticking, I think. I mean, that's what it really comes down to, right? It's just, mm. and that's um, like with um, the bakery run, um, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Al, um, how can I explain? It's like so with Will, who does all my shoot, all the shooting and stuff for off mm. the ground. Al, like mission statement before we started anything, bro. Was just let's just make dope shit. Like that's it. Make yeah. dope shit. That's all we're gonna do, and that's what we've done like so far and th- that brings me to my next point bro around like funding bro. like um, mm. you know the, the the funded pro the process of getting funding in new zealand for uh anything creative like that what have you found so far around that what 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 have, what pitfalls have you fell into that you don't understand or that uh it could be easier i uh listen man like uh i'm i you found this as well i'm sure like everybody's journey is different with this stuff you know like we all find our different footholds and we find our different things that kind of connect with people Same as um but what i've found personally well i've, I've been pretty lucky to be honest I've, I've, I've kind of managed to go from one thing to another um i made a short film at a film school called cosmic adventures that was like a sci-fi <laughs> romance and that got into a film festival Hold up for a second. We need to. We need this up. We go. Look at this. Here, here's. The oh man. my gosh! My gosh! Oh, then this. Yeah. I'm a superhero. 
No oh, bro. About it. Bro, look at you, man. That's me, man. So this was, oh yeah, Ultra. So basically what happened was I made um, a few short films and got into some festivals and I managed to like, you know, they did all right. My mates in England and I had been writing the script for a film called Ultra. And it's a superhero mockumentary. My idea of it was like, right, I'll buy a mask. I'll wear some undies over some tights and we'll just go make a silly YouTube video. And then over the next few years after that, we started writing it. Yeah. And we started like, oh, actually, no, we, this needs a story. This needs, okay, we'll give him a sidekick. Oh, actually, no, he needs to have like emotional investment. And then we spent a few years on it. And then it was just like, yeah, bro, let's let's try and get some money for it. And we actually did an a Indiegogo campaign for that and raised about $2,000. And yeah, I flew over to England just before COVID, like de- December, uh, November 2019. And we shot it over like a week. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. And see, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know you were going to bring that up. But uh, yeah. I think um, that's the other thing too, bro. Like, that's what I wanted to ask around, like crowdfunding. Yeah, man. Do you think that's the next wave, bro? Do you think that's where people are going to start investing their money in instead of... I mean, obviously, the government have all the press strings when it comes to that shit. But, like, I think I think it's really... From Māori Pacific Islanders, it's not... And even just New Zealanders in general. Like, mm. it's, it's not cool to ask for money. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I. it took me so long to reach a point where I was comfortable asking for money. Because what that takes is you've got to be comfortable in your own ability to deliver. Mm. And it took me so, it took like I had to graduate film school and like leave it a year before I was like, you know what, actually, I think I could make something worth money. And that's such a shift in thinking um, as a creative to be like, no, 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 I have value. And, and if people see that as well, they can pay for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. It, uh, it's, it's weird in New Zealand in particular because, like you said, the government has all the purse strings. Um, I, in England and stuff, there's 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 other funding avenues in terms of, like, private investors and stuff. But New Zealand very much is everyone's competing for the same money. Yeah. It's weird, like, bro. Like, um, just the stigma of asking, asking for money. But also, like, a lot of people kind of don't think that content costs any money. Because we've got so much for free. Yeah. Because we get so much for free. And again, it's, the, it's and uh, I think it's maybe just because I love food, but I love comparing it to food in terms of like the cheaper the thing is, the it's going to be worth that value. Mm. You're getting something for free, like a video on TikTok, you're going to watch it and in, in four hours, you're going to forget about it. And yeah, it's um, it's strange. But if you if you pay money, if you pay for Netflix, if you pay for these streaming services, you're gonna get stuff that people have worked really hard on. I think it's gonna take somebody, somebody creating some type of Netflix type thing, or you know, like that, with the ability to charge whatever, and have these really quality kind of uh, Maori Pacifica like homegrown kind of movies and and, and well yeah yeah i mean because and that's the thing about like the money all coming from one, and I, I, like i cannot stress how inexperienced i am compared to a lot of my peers with all this stuff but just the concept of of all maori and pacific islanders competing for the same money is very like it's just like right okay i guess we only have one seat at the table i don't know it feels very and but like I said, I've been blessed a lot. Of, I've, I've managed to receive some of that money for some of my work, um, and then I've had to raise some of the rest. It's a uh, it's it's a strange it's a strange dynamic, and it's a strange kind of field to to work your way through. It's um, yeah, it's weird, bro. But I, I really hope that someday. Here's the thing, too, bro. Is like I noticed like more times out of anything, anyone from another country, except for Australia. But any like you know like like bro, I I get people from all over the globe and like bro, I really like your stuff bro where can I donate and, the, and it never comes from anyone from New Zealand yeah <laughs> it's always yeah. come from someone from the states oh I don't want to say never it is there are awesome people that out that are like where can I donate like tell me where to go, where I can go 
people who believe in the cause of what we're doing mm. are really committed i found people who, who understand like fundamentally how hard it is to do the kind of things that we do those are the people that really commit financially and bro whether it's like 20 bucks two bucks or like two two thousand dollars yeah know, anything kind of helps i will say it's it's so easy to pirate stuff as well and that and it, it's been it's been weird going from the journey of the guy who streams and pirates a lot of stuff in my teenage years to like actually no i think recognizing the monetary value of something is so important um just to the dignity of a creator just like honoring how much work they, they put into it that said like <laughs> growing up in england we look, boy never got screened in england the movie boy we never got that in cinemas we got it from like one of my uncles brought it over on a co- like a dvd copy and we watched it and we like <laughs> we watched it like every night and so it, well, yeah it's weird like without it i wouldn't have seen all these great films so like with your journey with um boom uh uh bringing up like a voyager a voyage yeah voyager's legacy how did that all get started bro so that's your new baby i should say yeah so my latest short film the voyager's legacy it's it's so weird like when you when you're trying to figure out what to do next you have like so many half ideas kicking around like yeah i could do this i could do like i could maybe work on this script or i could see if there's anything in this idea and then the maori land film festival who have been very kind to me and have, have kind of helped me in, a lot in, the, in my career, um, had a pitch competition over Zoom. This was during the first lockdown last year. And I was like, you know what? I haven't pitched an idea in a while. Let's, I'll just write up a pitch for this idea that I've been having about the Doran Raids. And then I pitched it and then they gave me some money to write it. And I was like, oh crap, I've been paid to write a script. I'm a paid writer. Like it was such an ego, <laughs> an ego boost. And then I wrote the script. And then I was like, yeah, okay, we're going to, we're going to make this film. And, you know, there were seven of us, uh, seven, eight of us all together that had this experience of like, yeah, we got our script reviewed. We managed to have like master classes with indigenous filmmakers from all over the world about making films and indigenous identity and stuff like that. And then, yeah, we managed to pull a crew together and we shot most of it in December. <laughs> and now we're here. And uh, so it's uh, based around the time of the Dawn Raid? Yeah, man. It's a, it's a pretty heavy story. I think I realized part of, of bringing uh, our people to the screen is letting everyone know who we actually are as people. And you kind of have to tell these stories of like... I, basically, I found out about the Dawn Raids when I moved here. And I was asking my, my friends, my film school friends, and a lot of them were, you know, Palangis, like Pakias. And it was like, oh, what's crazy about the Dawn Rage, right? And they'd be like, oh, is that the hip hop thing? Bro, when I was in high school, someone brought that up to me. And I said, you mean like Savage? And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they were like, no, the Dawn Rage. I had no clue, bro. I learned bro, about I it probably... like year 13. And you think about it and just like, actually what happened is, is maybe one of the most twisted and evil things a government could do yeah. to its people. Um, and so I was real fascinated about... I just wanted, like, I wasn't surprised that no one knew about it. It's, it's like, of course, it's mm. been swept under the rug. But the fact that it could be swept under the rug, the fact that so few people actually cared at the time, it's so interesting to me. And so, so yeah, I, I wrote a film about that. Um, but I'm also cautious of uh, films about us that are very, like, sad and gloomy mm. in a way that's forgettable. Like, like there's so many, like, oh, it's so hard to be brown. Like, my head's down. It's gray. It's raining. Oh, I hate it. Oh, how are we going to get out of here? Yeah. Because as a brown person, that's not my experience at all. Like, as a brown person, I, as a kid, I was playing in the garden with my cousins. I was like, we were laughing. It was, it was a house full of love and joy. And then this outside thing happened to them. So my take on it was that, like I want to tell a story of these kids and the imagination and the, the wild kind of worlds that these children live in, uh, a, a, like a fantasy, a fantasy story. And then what happens when that fantasy is kind of ruined and when the monsters end up turning up in the real world too. Mm. It's, it's so fucking creative. Bro. 
Mate, oh, thank you, man. I'm fucking. I'm looking forward to it. I've, yeah, I was. I was donator number hundred, bro. One hundred, bro. You keep it one hundred. That's keep right. It. That's right. That's the way you keep it, bro. Yeah. But, um. Also, one of my good friends, one of my one of my very very good friends that is related to you, is in the in the show. Is that yeah? My, my bro Ryan. My bro, my cousin, uh, my cousin Ryan. Yeah, <laughs> he's Ryan. Ryan Lamatia. Yeah, he's a. Uh, How did he go? How's he going, bro? In terms of acting. Tell you what, man. Uh, so, so I wrote this character, uh, and so it, the 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 short film follows like a Samoan family in the seventies, and like a lot of Samoan families in the seventies, it was a big house, a lot of people. Oh, sorry, um, a lot of a big family in a not as big house, right? People sharing beds, um, you know that kind of thing. And so his character Vika is the oldest of the children, and also kind of the youngest of the grown ups kind of thing. So he's the mature. He's the mature child of the house. And he's also, we don't say it explicitly in the film, but he's kind of a Polynesian Panther revolutionary type. Uh, and so <laughs> just based on conversations that I've been having with Ryan, he's at uni, he's doing social sciences. He's real into the kind of the cause, the cope up of like advance our people. And I was like, oh, Ryan actually aligns with the identity of the character. Had a chat with him. We had some lunch. And then I was like, let's read Bro, the, the, the guy's cool as hell. Like, he's cool. He's slick. He's empathetic. He's he's great. He's great on camera. Okay, bro. Okay, story time, bro. Okay, because I know he's gonna listen to this. So, yo, story time, right? I, yeah, I used yeah. to coach Ryan. Okay, so yeah. I've known him for since he was a little dude. Um, we went we went to America. Okay, yeah. So I took him to America. Have you heard the story, bro? Did my cousin Maddie go on that trip as well? No, no, no. It was okay. just him. This is that was this that was the first time he went to America. Okay, right, right. I didn't go on that. Right. This is the second time. Okay. All right, here we go. We get off the plane. All right, and this motherfucker is talking. He's talking all around how, how you know, I've been to America, bro. I know all of this shit. Can I ask how old he was? How old he was? Fifteen. He would have been maybe sixteen. Okay. Guess he's sixteen, fifteen, right? He was like, yeah, nah, I've been, bro. Heaps of times, all goods. Yeah, fucking. Yeah, all good. Bro, we get off the plane, we get into L, and this is my first time taking a group of young men over to You're in America. You are in charge of the trip? Being, I was in charge. I did everything, right? So I was like, okay, fuck. You know, I'm stressing out. Like, oh, where's the vans? Like, the yeah. vans, oh, fuck, we can't. We're trying to fit everybody in there. Okay, we've got it. You know, like, young. Like, I was like, fuck, okay, stressing out and everything, right? The stress levels, getting 13, or no, 15 kids. Yeah, and and a couple of parents to help, a couple of helpers from New Zealand to America to L- LA is is rough, bro. It's it's fucking yeah. stressful, right? I can't even imagine. You know, like baggage and make sure everyone's got their shirt, and you know, I'm thinking I'm on top of everything, bro. We got all the way. We got from we got from LAX. We got all the way to our hotel, which is in uh, Cova, uh, yeah, Cova City, which is by um, Universal Studios. Yeah, because you know, yeah. we were going to Universal Studios the next day before we had a tournament. So I was like, "Cool, we get there. Everything's cool, right?" You know, Ryan's Ryan's slick as a motherfucker, yeah, bro. I've been here before, bro. <laughs> what we need to do, bro, is we need to do this. And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah all good." And so we get out of the, we get to the hotel and just drop off. Oh fuck! Finally, we're here. Right. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can relax now. And I'm like, "Okay, boys, we're gonna go." You know. Oh, our first feed is in and out burger. We're going to walk just up here. It would have nice. been, bro, like 300 meters, right? We're going to just walk this way. He's probably listening now and going, fuck you, Tim. Why are you, bro? <laughs> he's, he's like listening like, fuck you, Tim. Why are you bringing this shit up? All right, here we go. So we're walking, 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 and we're going to get a feed, right? And we're eating it. And, you know, he sees, yeah, bro, I've had in and out before, bro. Like, you know, this is this is the secret menu, bro. You need to get this, this. And I'm like. Ryan, just shut up, okay? Everybody's getting the same fucking shit, yeah, okay, yeah, Ryan? Yeah. And he and he's talking it up, yeah, bro, yeah, bro, all good. We eat, you know. This is a long story, but anyway, we eat. It's all good. We we clean our shit away. We're walking back, all right. And like I said, three hundred meters, not that far, okay. Ryan goes, I'm just gonna go over and get some donuts, and I'm like, I didn't hear him. He crosses the road, right? Oh, right. He takes three steps on the road. Police car, what? Blah, 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 blah. fucking drifts around, bro. There's smoke, everything, bro. 
Holy crap. The car's coming around, right? He's crossing the road in a black hoodie coming around. The door, he, the, the police officer throws the front door as he's fucking drifting. The door opens and he gets out and he pulls, uh, I don't think he pulled his gun out, but he's like, get on the, like, because he's jaywalking, right? Yeah, of course. And he's like, get against the foot oh. And this little 16 year old was shitting his, <laughs> shitting his pants, bro. Yeah, man. Holy shit. I'm scared for him. And, bro, I and they put him up against the wall, bro. And he's like this. And I had to come over. I was like, hey, man, like, we're from New Zealand. We don't know the rules here, man. And I was like telling the, um, Telling the there was the 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 male one put him over the seat. He just had his hands up against the wall, and then I was talking to uh, the officer, and I turn around, and there's fifteen boys with phones just recording everything, just like, and then um, I'm, and then Ryan's just like against the wall, like shit in his pants, bro. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, fucking up. And then I was like, hey, listen, like we don't know. And then the lady was like, okay, that's fine. And then um, he's like, you stay there. And then the lady gets on the thing. And she was cool about it, bro. She's like, this guy's got warrants for his arrest. We need to take him in. And you see Ryan like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> and all the boys are cracking up. And then, yeah, we turn around. And, and I gave him the passport. This is where we're from. And then, bro, it was the funniest shit out, bro. Holy. Unbelievable. I can't believe I've never heard that story, man. That's... He's, he's hidden it, bro. Yeah. He's yeah. hidden it. And I had, to, I had to ring up Debs and Ellen and tell them straight away, like, hey, this happened. He's fine. But um, if you see any photos on um, social media, this is what's happened. Oh, my God. I can't even imagine those Debs, like, getting that call, bro. Like, bro. And they were all good. So I said, he's fine. But we he just crossed the road and a police officer just, stri- bro, I'm telling you, bro. They fucking Tokyo drifted it around the corner, bro. Tell just- you what, bro. Probably hasn't touched a donut since then, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's the vegan now, right? He's, yeah. he's, he's... Uh, no, nah, he's he's back on. The oh, is he back? The, okay. Yeah, the vegan thing was temporary. Yeah. But no, one of the one of the nicest kids I've ever coached. Me and him used to work out every every Sunday, like hard he's for like. like that, yeah. But he's an amazing, yeah. amazing kid. Yeah. <laughs> so on New Year's, our like uh, our family goes like to a little kind of sleepaway camp. Oh, is it the one on uh, Tor Bay over the shore? Yeah, like over on the shore. Yeah. Um, okay. And so we, uh, yeah, so we, we had a few drinks. Uh, this must have been like the 30th, like the night before New Year's. And we, we had a pretty good night, man. Like we were drinking, one of our cousins had just turned 18. So we were like initiating him into the, like the drinking of the cousins kind of thing. And it was real good, man. But our family also does this thing called boot camp where they wake up at 6 a.m. and they do a workout on the beach. Ooh. And uh, I hadn't been training for a few months. Uh, I was a bit out of shape, but Ryan, man, Ryan was out of bed. He was hitting the workouts. I was, I was, bro, I was holding on to my knees. I was trying not to. <laughs> he's a, he's he's just, just, yeah. oh. I've got many memories and many, many times where I've uh, gone to war with that dude. And uh, he's, he's, he's just an amazing dude. Like he's just an amazing kid. Yeah. And I'm so proud that I, I know him and that I've had these experiences with him. And, and you know, like, uh, yeah, and I, from time to time, I always hit him up and, you know, just say, how's things, brother? He's and- a real, he's a real hardworking guy and he works, he does a lot of work. He works for um, AT right now and he's working with like um, the navigators or what, Oceania navigators. I don't know if you know much about that. Oh. He's basically helping like a lot of Islander kids transition into the uni thing. Um, and he's, he's real like, since he's gone to uni, he's like real clicked into the, like, like the cause and the, like I said, like just the co-pop of advancing things for our people. I, I could have easily seen him do that. Like, I, yeah. Like as I was, as I had him as a as a young man, um, you know, I've always been, yeah. He, he's always been. He's had an empathy for things and yeah, and passion. You know, he's gonna love this. He's gonna love him. Yeah, <laughs> he's but like, he's a piece of shit too. Just, yeah. <laughs> but he's also a piece of shit. Not the real. Oh, he. Uh, he's like he kicked one of the younger kids at a Christmas party. No, he didn't. <laughs> I'm just trying to make up like mean oh, stories about yeah. him. Anyway, brother, so what's next for you, like, um, in terms of the um, Voyager's Legacy? So Voyager's Legacy, we're, we're now in post-production, um, which is a very long way of saying we're editing it, um, putting it together. We're trying to make it um, ready. We want to premiere it at the Māori Land Film Festival, which is in March in Ōtaki on the Kapiti Coast. So we've got quite a bit of work to do on the film in the next month. 
Um, but yeah, after that, films kind of take on a life of their own once you've finished with them. And what about you, bro? What, what's next for you? Bro? For me, man, like, I just want to keep hustling, man. Like, I, I did a lot of cool stuff last year, especially with the stand-up and the, the film, uh, just the filmmaking stuff. So I really want to write a lot more this year. I want to get on the stage. And I think I kind, I kind of just want to, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> just want to keep, keep going, keep hustling. You're, bro, I would love one day, bro. I want to be, I want to be in the green room with you, G. You know, bro, like that's not even like a, that's that's like that'll happen. Like, that's, you know, I don't that's, know. That's I've got I've got to find time. Like that's me. It's finding time to it's, get yeah. to these open open. Mic. It's it's rough, man. It's it's such a um, we've talked about it before, man. Yeah. It's such a concerted effort. If you if you lose sight of the ball, you can end up going weeks without even writing a joke <laughs> like, like you really gotta like you gotta have the time and then you gotta use the time and then you gotta it's work it's work yeah anyway brother let's see uh yeah like we if people want to find you bro where's the best place to, to i'm on the ground bro i'm on the ground and i'm on twitter um at bruiser b-r-o-o-z-e-r underscore um that's me bro um yeah <laughs> Again, bro, like, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I think your message and the things that you're doing, bro, is much needed in the community, brother. And I'm just really, I'm really happy that we linked up, bro. Like, Me too, man. Me know? too. I, I am. And, I'm, and bro, like, it's going to be, I can see us working a lot more in the future, bro. Just, just in general, man. Like, you know, just helping each other out. So For sure. bro, by all means, bro, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to everything, brother. So thank you so much, man. Just quickly before I go, yeah. like I actually, um, I have just because my co-host will kill me for not saying. Oh I yes, yeah, you got a podcast, right? I have a podcast of my own, and it's been very. We're still kind of trying to find what the show is, um, but it's me and my best mate from England, and we call every week. Oh, cool. the, basic, the basic premise is like, what does twenty first century friendship look like? How do we maintain a friendship when we're living on other sides of the planet? And we just had our first guests on. Um, Alice Kirker and Katie Longbottom who are like theatre people in the Auckland scene but they've been best friends since they were teenagers and so we kind of get these what we're trying to do is get best friends onto the show and then talk about like what's your favourite memory what's your worst memory what would you change about the other person and it's just real yeah it's uh, it's a cool concept so people can check that out it's called What's All This Then it's available wherever you get your podcasts What's All This Then uh, I'm, I'm signing up for that get me on bro I want to go on with my best mate oh. Yeah, bro, like, no lie, get, we'll suss something out. Let me know, bro. I would love to come on. Please, man. My best mate, his name's Brian. And yeah. Brian was there when he was the driver. He was there when that Ryan shit happened. But, uh, bro, he's, he's my G, bro. Like, uh, I've got um, multiple drunky stories of doing Oh, that's what we want, man. Shit, we, want, you know? we want the crazy stories. We want the story, like, what time you were angry at him. Like, oh, like stuff like that, man. Yeah. Anyway, brother, thank you so much. I appreciate everything, and I can't wait. I can't wait to see your rise, bro. Bro, bro, likewise, likewise. I feel like we're on a path, bro. We're on a path.